guys I'm doing this video uh, and I'm gonna be showing how I fixed the problem with this GE washer so what happened was the machine was on and suddenly the power went off and when the power came back the machine was dead so I'm guessing there was probably a power surge or something that blew out some components inside and what happened is when power came back the whole thing was unresponsive the power button do, would do nothing start play would do nothing and my, my lid was locked the lid was locked with all the wet clothes inside so not only i had a broken machine my clothes were inside which i needed badly so i'm gonna show what exactly was done the machine um, it's fixed now but I'm making this video to help anyone out so first thing first before we fix the machine we I needed my clothes out and in order to do that I use a brute force because the next day I had to go on a very important trip I couldn't wait for the machine to be fixed to get my clothes out so basically I used this I use this pry bar and I, I went underneath here like behind just just behind the door and pried open the door well, right now it's gonna open because I already fixed it but if the machine dies when the clothes are inside the door is locked at that point and it, it's not yet unlocked unless the power comes back on and unlocks it so you're gonna have to pry it open and I, I don't know of a better way so in the process you will end up breaking this door lock but it's gonna be another thing you'll have to fix when everything else is fixed so that's uh, that was the first thing I did took out my clothes then next thing what you have to do is open this front panel since the machine is completely dead it's completely unresponsive the first thing is some electronic board is gone uh, I'm gonna open this machine and try to find if there is some kind of a fuse or I'm gonna inspect the board see if, if there is any signs of damage if there is then I know that piece has gone so in order to open this first thing is you need to remove this panel and there are no screws here right now but uh, you need to remove this first just pull it out it's gonna be <coughs> it's gonna pop out a little bit let me try this hand right. so it pops open and oh, sorry so just behind this is this little gray thing which is the second thing that pops out and behind this there is a screw so we need to open this this has a star kind of a head and if you have this type of a bolt like with a star shape I don't know if you can see it if you have this you can unscrew this right like so and the second thing you want to do is pull this thing out press this little white tab and then pull further and this is out with this gone it's gonna be loose you're gonna you're gonna have to lose it and then over here you have to push up a little bit to detach it from where it's connected so let's try to do it see if i can do from one hand all right i think i'm gonna have to pause the video and then do it okay so if i keep prying this it it goes in in upward motion it goes up and it releases there's no other screw other than the one screw i showed you and if you notice inside this thing is connected to this and and there's another groove here which is kind of held back with this nut so these are the only things which is holding it back and once you do this you will see the board behind it is revealed so what i did next is i wanted to inspect if there is any damage inside of this so first is you remove this wire all right and then unbolt all these 
and try to do an inspection of this board now what i did i did open this up and i try to see if there is any burnt pieces on the board or if there is any damage something which is not natural i couldn't find anything i i couldn't see i couldn't spot any fuse or any such thing so i said maybe this board is not the problem so with that i kind of thought okay maybe there is something else and with that i'm going to keep it on the side so what i did next is we have to open the rest of the machine at the top and in order to do that let me move this out of the way you're going to have to remove the bolts here it's already removed because i was in the process of fixing so one two three four yeah four bolts when you remove and then you pull this towards you yep it loosens and then pull then pull up maybe a little more i'm gonna have to pry it all right Perfect. when you do this this the top piece comes out and at that point you're gonna be have, able to put this on the side all right there you go all right with this you have access to inside of the machine now what you want to notice is over here you see a lot of wires and this was my point of focus so this is the only other board which is getting a lot of connectivity and a lot of you know wires going in everything else is mechanical or something else so my, my area of focus was this board and in order for me to inspect this i basically unscrewed here here and here three spots and and then i had to remove all the wires so if you see every wire will have like a tab you press the tab and you pull out the connectors so i did this and i, I basically pulled out every single connector and don't worry about forgetting because every connector will go in its own spot only there's no way you can put a connector in a wrong spot because they are designed to go in one and only one spot so one two three four at the bottom there is five here and then there are three over here and then there is one big black one and there's one behind over here you can't see it but once you start opening and loosening the board that will become visible and then you're gonna have to remove this piece also just pry it with a screwdriver so open everything up and basically remove this board for further inspection i have the this is basically the board i replaced already i'm going to show you the board which was there which was damaged and i'll tell you how i narrowed down the problem all right guys this is the board this is the original board which i took out from this machine and so right now this board is in a really bad shape part of it is my prop my due to because of me um but you know I, I did inspection so when i was inspecting this board i couldn't figure out if there is anything wrong just by looking at it but right over here where my finger is there was like a fuse and since there was a fuse i was suspecting the fuse is kind of damaged so what I did is I used a multimeter. Let me see if I have it here. Okay. So I use one of these like a multimeter and I wanted to check if the fuse is not damaged. And the way to do it is you put the multimeter on ohms setting. So if you see this one, the lowest ohm setting is 200. This is where you want to be at. So All right, so when you go there, it'll say zero L, but let me, let me try to give a demo. Um, if, if I take two electrodes and, and if I connect them, like if I take these two, if I connect them, it'll start from a big number and it'll drop down to zero. And this zero basically means there is no resistance. So this is what I wanted to make sure I, I connected. 
So there is no fuse because I kind of, I was messing with it and it got damaged. It's kind of gone now. But if I have to give you a demo, let's just let's assume this line over here. If I have to do continuity test of this, I put one end on the one side and other end on the other side. And I, I see what the readings are in multimeter. Sorry, it's hard because I'm doing it with one hand. And if you notice, all right, what just happened? Okay, so multimeter will show you It'll start from a big number and it'll drop down to almost zero. So if if it is dropping to almost zero, then the fuse is good. But if, if, if there is no change, if the multimeter kind of doesn't even move at all, then the fuse is bad. So in my case, the fuse was bad and that led me to conclusion that this board is the problem and what i did at that point i i looked up for this machine what is the part number of this board so what you want to do is go to one of the ge's website and find the part number of this board you will also find some numbers written over here but these are not accurate part numbers do not order the board by looking at this part this this is this is completely different i have no clue what these numbers mean but you're gonna have to search up the part number of this board by going to one of the websites and then order that specific part number so this part the original price from ge is around 300 dollars, but that's not what i paid uh, i basically went to ebay and i searched for the part number and i was able to get uh, a part someone was selling for like 70 or 80 dollars so i got that i made sure it's it belongs to exact same machine and i i brought in and then that's actually this one right here the one i already connected and yeah I make sure i want to connect all the wires yeah so once i did this then it was time to test it and I, I did, when I powered on, of course, I had to replug everything back here as well. When I powered on, you know what, let's just go ahead and do it. All right, I'm not going to be able to demo it too much, but all right, sorry. I'm fixing, I'm fixing the, the plug in the back, the wires, the harness. There's only one way it will go. There's no way you can put it incorrect way. Okay, so harness is back in. Yeah, at that point when I powered back on, uh, well, the machine did come up. I mean, I'm not gonna show it right now. It's all powered off right now because I'm just explaining what I did. Yeah, when I changed the board, there was power. This thing lit up and I was able to select all the cycles. I was able to start the machine. The machine actually started the water water would even come but everything will happen except there was no spin the in the whole cycle tub this tub did not spin at all so i knew at that point uh one problem was fixed oh one more thing so remember when i opened this door this thing got broken so i had to replace this because if this is broken there's no way you can turn the machine back on and in order to do this since the top is open if you notice that red piece that's the lock so what do you want to do remove these two screws and then if you remove the harness that's going in the back let's see if i can show you All right, there's a harness in the back, um, which is getting hooked on to that. I have the old piece over here, actually. So this this is the, the door lock, the previous one that broke. And here is the harness, which is connected. So you have to remove the harness. And when you remove those two screws, this will come back, come out, you know, right back. And 
I ordered this one as well from eBay. It cost me like 20 bucks. So $80 for the board, $20 for this. So far I'm $100 in and the machine comes on but there is no spin. So this is where I am so far. So after that, um, in order to investigate why is it not spinning, there's gotta be some problem with the motor, right? So um, I opened up the back. If you notice, the back is open. And in the back, let me see if I can show. If you notice that black piece, that is the motor and that is behind that is the stator so i did open that up and let me show you um what did i find inside all right guys so this is the piece that i was trying to show you uh, i've already changed it and in order for to for you to remove this and in you know diagnose if this is the problem there is a bolt over here remove the bolt and then pull this thing out when you remove the bolt and try to pull this out, it's gonna be latched to the piece behind it with a very strong magnetic force. So you'll have to kind of pull it out really hard. But don't worry, once this is out, once you try to pull, this thing will come in your hand. It's a little heavy, so just be careful. Uh, let me try to remove this. Okay, once you remove the motor, cover the black one you will see behind this behind the motor you will see this this is called the stator and it'll have three bolts so you're gonna have to remove these three bolts and then this thing will be out this will will come right out and while you're doing this behind this there will be two wires connected one is a three prong wire connected over here and the second one is uh, like uh, a wire that goes right in here so what you want to do is check if the problem is really this uh, stator or not and the way to do it is again bring back your multimeter put it on the ohms setting right here and then you want to take the terminals and you use these three terminals to test it so i'm going to put the you know prongs to any two of these three let's say these two and you will notice a reading 16 point something so this reading varies by the model and it varies by the machine in case of my machine it is 16.4 then i'm gonna put pick any other two prongs and try to see the readings let's say these two now the reading should be very similar so yeah 16.5 again now, if you see 16 on one, but if you see, let's say 100 or, or, or a very random reading on the second, something is wrong. No matter which two, you know, things you pick here, which two prongs you pick, the reading should be very, very close. So let me pick the first and the third now. And the reading is again 16.5. So this tells me there is no problem with this. There's absolutely no problem with this data but yet my machine is not spinning. So the only other piece that could be a problem is this. Now this is, is a small device attached to the stator, which is the purpose of this is really to check the position of the stator. It's called stator position or something checker. And it comes with a harness. So by the rule of elimination, I thought if I have to bet what's wrong, it's probably this guy. So I did not order the stator, did not order this motor. I only ordered this from eBay and I just took chances because I kind of eliminated everything else and I thought this is the only other problem. And I did not order motor or the stator because I tested and as per the test, this should be working. It shouldn't have a problem. This guy, there is no way to test because it's all, electronics is all inside. I have absolutely no access. It can't be screwed up. It cannot be screwed open. So I just took a chance and I said, okay, I'll order it. And when the new piece came, you have to pop out the old one, like from here. It's 
just going to come out and then from the front it's attached in two places one is here but right now i'm trying to be a little rough first of all i'm holding a camera and secondly i don't care because this is a spare piece i have i don't have but you want to be careful and just pop this one out there you go all right there you have it yeah so you when you get a new one just replace this with the old one and that's exactly what i did i replaced this piece and when i put everything back together everything was working the machine was working you know um, it was spinning no issues now this over here, what you see, is a spare piece. When I order from eBay, they sell the complete thing. They sell the stator, uh, this thing, and, and this all together. I could have bought this also separately, but eBay, I, I didn't have that option. Anyway, um, this is spare. I have no use of it. I'm just going to throw it away. This one is the old one, which is bad anyways. And I, I have no use for this. Yeah. It popped right back in because it's magnetic so that's how I was able to fix it and let me just give a quick test I'm gonna you know power it up all right it's powered on um, I'm gonna just turn it on it's gonna do its test and if you can see it's spinning so like I said, no issues at this time, the thing is working and hopefully this video is helpful for others as well. Let me know if you have any comments. Thanks guys.